Hallelujah. The Lord is good, isn't he? And he's not getting any better. <laughs> but he's working on us, and we're growing, getting better. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes this morning. This has been, like Joan and I were talking earlier in the week, and this came up, and, and it, I haven't gotten away from it since. You know. And that's why in the last four or five days, the Lord has been drawing me into the scripture and into this truth. And, and that's what we're going to go into this morning. I don't know about you, but I have a great desire to see more, hear more, know more, and be more Amen. of God. Yeah. Hungry. I was hungry when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, December 28, 1972. It was about 2.30 in the morning, which made it kind of December 29th, but I think it was an extension of December 28, you know what I mean. That's when it all started. And uh, we were hungry then, but not very smart, <laughs> spiritually. But the Lord has been with us, and we've had some awesome times since then. And I, don't, I, I, I have to tell you, I, I believe I'm more happy to be a Christian, to know God today than I've ever been in my life before. When we got baptized in the Holy Ghost years ago, y'all know what date it was. <laughs> uh, one of the spiritual leaders was told about what had happened to us. And he made a statement that I knew was not the truth. He said, oh, yeah, I said, but that'll wear off. It's been like, come on, do the math. 50 years. What? 50, years. 50, 50, 50, a little over 50 years. I mean, it, it's wore on. And it's still wearing on. I was going up the aisle in Dominion the other day. Just minding my own business, but I didn't realize I was going up the aisle like this. And I meet this woman, and she looks at me like, and I just smiled and went on. <laughs> and it quieted down a little bit. I didn't realize there was anybody, a huge step for a senior. <laughs> I didn't realize there was anybody that close, but I'm telling you, it don't wear off when you stay in his presence. Amen. We need the glory of the Lord in our lives every day. It's not just for Sunday or Wednesday night. It's not just for a certain period of the year, a certain season of the year. It is for every second of every minute of every day of every week of every month of every year as long as you're breathing and then some. Amen? And if you do that, if you keep hungry and thirsty after him, you'll, you'll be hungry and thirsty after what we're going to talk about this morning. And the scripture is in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, that can be kind of like referred to as a cliche type scripture through the years, because how many times have we heard that quoted? Not by might, not by power. But we need to get that on the inside of us so that we know this was not just somebody making a statement in Scripture. This was God speaking. The word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel saying, and God is saying, not by might nor by power. Any effort that you have or make any effort that you, you put into anything in your life is not the end result and doesn't produce.
produce the right result will never ever fix it or make it work. You cannot trust your efforts. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, God's Holy Spirit is always working in the earth, even, even when we don't even recognize or realize it. The Spirit of God is moving. God's doing some things here this morning for some people in this place. And you don't even know it. A lot of the problem is we've been, we've been, we've lived our lives in these physical bodies and we're used to trusting tangible feelings. We're used to trusting what we sense and feel with our, with our senses. Paul told the Corinthians, he said, for we walk by faith and not by sight or not by, by our physical senses. And if we, if we get too caught up in our physical senses, God's going to be working all around us, and we won't have a clue what's going on. We won't know that he's doing a work. We will be looking for tangible, physical evidence and proof that God is working when we need to get the evidence from the Word of God. The promises of God are all you need as evidence that God is doing something. You got a need? Find out what the Word says about it. Stand on it. Say it with your mouth. And then smile and say everything is under control. Amen. Somebody needs to say that right now. Go ahead and say it. Everything is under control. I, I, I'm not saying to say that because you feel it. But you know something. And when you know that you know that you know you're okay. Because your faith and your trust is in God. We need to give him thanks and acknowledging and acknowledge on a regular basis what he's doing. If we only give him, I mean, I've been around long enough to know that people get excited when they see a manifestation, an outward tangible manifestation in their physical bodies, in their finances, in their family life, or, or in some, some materialistic situation. They, they get excited and, oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. When you begin to believe it, it's when you need to start shouting. It starts right here. Amen. We need to be thanking God regularly, daily, for what we're believing Him for. If there's something not going right in your family, your household, I'm not saying you, you should, yeah, that's okay, you know, well, we don't care about it. Yeah, we do. We've already taken care of it. We've brought it to the feet of Jesus, and we've found out what the Word said about it. Now we're believing what God's Word said instead of what the situation is saying. So we're excited, and we're thanking God every day. When you pray, instead of begging God for the same thing all the time, ask Him once, and then keep thanking Him for it until Jesus comes. Amen? Because you believe it. There's some things I believe that I haven't seen yet with my natural eyes, but I see it. Sometimes when I think about it, I just smile. Think about something now that you, you, you believe in God for. Think about something you'd like to see God do and manifest in your life and situation. And, and, and just give it a smile. Come on, let me see you smile at it. I don't know what you're believing for. I don't know what you're thinking about. He's working on it. The Spirit of God is is working right from the beginning when, when creation started. The Spirit of God moved upon the waters. I mean, God started this whole thing by the power of His Spirit, the might of His Spirit. And any other might, any other power, pales into insignificance when it's compared to the power and the might of the Holy Spirit. That's why he said it's not by might nor power of man, we could say that easily, and, and, and our natural surroundings, but by the Spirit of the living God, the victory comes, the deliverance comes. Now, this is taking place. This, this scripture is taking place when Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel was, was going to build the temple, and uh, the Babylonians had came, and, and they, they'd swept out, Jerusalem, you know, just kind of like erased the place, flattened the place, and, and the Jews were taken captive. This guy, Zerubbabel, was, was, was born in captivity. 
in, in, in Babylon. So he was kind of an aristocrat because he had, he had a good position, but he was a Jew. And uh, Babylonian-born Jew, so, you know, there were some people who didn't agree with him too much, didn't like him too much, but that's beside the point. What God thinks about you is more important than what other people think about you. Have you ever, ever had people who didn't appreciate you very much, didn't think too much about you? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Jesus had the same situation. <laughs> and so did Zerubbabel. So, I mean... He had a lot of resistance and a lot of, a lot of stuff against him when he returned to Jerusalem and began to build the temple. And uh, a lot of the problems were from the Jews, from people who said, you can't do this. You don't belong here. And you were, you were born in, in Babylon, and, and you've got their ideas, and you've got their ways, and you're not a true Jew, and all this kind of stuff. So he had to deal with all that. And it created hindrances and problems. A lot of times we read the scripture and we're looking at, we're looking at, at, at Zerubbabel's situation and we see, we see this giant mountain in front of me. Most Bible scholars believe there was really no problem with the physical, tangible mountain. And there are, there are references in scripture to situations where, where people creating situations was considered a mountain. Jesus used that metaphor when he was in uh, Mark 11, 23, 24, you know, when the, the, the fig tree had been cursed, and then they talked to me. He said, have faith in God. And uh, he speak to the mountain. If you'll say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. He, he wants us to speak to the situation and say to it what we desire instead of what we see. Say to the mountain what you'd like to see happen instead of what the mountain is trying to declare to you. So in Zerubbabel's, Zerubbabel's situation, he's dealing with a lot, of, a lot of problems that was trying to stop him from building the temple, stop him from, from restoring Jerusalem. And he did not know how to get through all this stuff. And the Spirit of God gives him this truth. And this truth passes right on down through, even through Jesus speaking in Mark chapter 11. And it comes to us today, and God is saying the same thing in the New Testament through Jesus. He's saying, don't go fretting or worrying about the mountain. Don't worry about how big or how high it is. Don't look at how big the problem is before you, but trust in the Spirit of the living God. And you cannot trust God. Listen closely to what I'm going to say. You cannot trust the Spirit of God and, and doubt at the same time. Speak doubt and, and, and live doubt and breed doubt and worry and let your nights be filled with anxiety and fear. You've got to put something in your mouth that is evidence of what your heart has already been convinced of. And that's what Jesus was talking about. And that's what the Spirit of God was talking about when he spoke to Zerubbabel. He said, don't worry about it. The foundation is going to be laid. The cornerstone is going to be laid. Everything is under control. Do you understand that? It's not by might. It's not by power. You don't have to see how you're going to defeat these people around you. Don't worry about it. Actually, some people believe that even before the temple was totally, totally finished, Zerubbabel it was executed. I was, oh, defeat. Uh, no, if he was serving God and loved God, man, he was just dancing. On golden streets between Gasper walls and after going through pearly gates or whatever. <laughs> Don't matter. He was in the presence of God. So, you know, actually, if, if, if a person has been martyred for their faith, they have what the scriptures refer to as a better resurrection. We, we shudder and fear about that. But anyway, God was saying, this thing is going to happen. You're a tool an instrument I'm using, Zerubbabel, but my spirit will accomplish the work whether you're here or not. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. You're in this place and you've been fearing and wondering, what's going to happen? Am I going to be able to finish what, what, what God wants me to do in my family, in my work, in, in my situation in life? Listen, don't you go fretting about it. Put God in the middle of it. Smile, and God will see that your situation 
reaches the place that he intended it to reach because your confidence is not in your abilities. Your confidence is not in the abilities of your household, your family, your workplace. It is in God. We put too much trust in what we can do and what we think. We've got to understand that God is faithful and God will see it through. Somebody shout amen. 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 Our efforts will not produce the complete results. But that does not mean we shouldn't make the effort or take the effort. God don't want you to sit back and do nothing because it's by His Spirit. He wants you to do what He leads you to do. And if we can find a happy medium, if we can find a, a, this, this, this perfect balance between trusting God and then doing what you feel is right to do. I'm telling you, there's not enough demons in hell to stop you from seeing the blessing of the Lord on your life and on your household. It don't mean there won't be trouble. Pastor Ray referred to the scriptures this morning. Jesus said, in the war you're going to have tribulation. But don't go worrying about it. I've already gone ahead of you. I got you covered. I've gone ahead of you and everything is under control. Amen. But, but the, God is working. He's working today. And I, I, I need to reemphasize that again. God is working for some of you here this morning, and you're fearing. But the word of the Lord is coming to my spirit right now. Put your fear aside. Put your ideas aside. And get the word of God out and find out what God said about your situation. And then speak what God said and begin to shout the victory. Because I've already gone ahead and given you the victory. It's yours today. It's yours today. Make the effort. You see, when Jesus healed the blind man, remember he spit, made mud. He put it in his eyes. And he said, now go wash. What do you think accomplished the miracle of rest restoration of eyesight? Was it not the Spirit of God? It was the Spirit of God, wasn't it? But was there not effort required? Go wash. And actually, Jesus himself made some effort when he stooped down and got some mud, dirt, and spit in it, stirred it up. Is there another way? <laughs> Good thing the blind man couldn't see. <laughs> and stirred it up and put it on his eyes. He said, now go wash. And, and he went, went and washed. There, there, there was this effort. He could have got upset. He could have got mad and said, no, I'm not going to go wash. You wash it off. You put spit and dirt in my eyes. You wash it off. I'm not going to go do that. He responded and was obedient to the leading of God through the Son of God. And listening to and obeying the voice of the Spirit of God, whether it comes to you reading the Word, whether it's somebody preaching the Word, whether it's somebody sharing with you, and all of a sudden the light comes on, you know this is what you have to do. But part of you is saying, I'm not doing that. I'm not going there. I'm not saying this. I'm not asking forgiveness. I'm not. Whatever the case might be. Our obedience is what releases the anointing for the Spirit of God to do the work. Amen? Remember in, I, in Isaiah 38, some of you are familiar with this, and we're going back to the Old Testament, see the same principle was there. And uh, Isaiah had been, or Ezekiah had been told that he's going to die and not live. So he prays. Isaiah is not even out of the court. And God speaks to him. Go back and tell him. I'm going to give him another 15 years. So why not Spirit of God just zap? Done. No. He said, make a plaster with a lump of figs. And put it upon the boil. And he'll recover. That's the effort. Do you think? The boil necessarily was healed by the plaster? No, it was obedience and doing what God said to do. Sometimes you need to stop being super spiritual and listen to what God is saying because he's going to tell you to do something simple.
years ago, they used to, used to, used to write, you, you know, I'd see them, people just, quite a long time ago, this has been on the go, K-I-S-S. I mean, if you know what K-I-S-S means, not kiss, but what it would mean. Come on, somebody tell me out loud. <laughs> Keep it simple. Uh, Sophie's not here. She's not, she's not allowed to hear stupid. They want to keep her from calling people stupid. I said something was stupid the other day, and Angie said, you better not say that around her. And she said, she looked, Sophie looked like, did you just say stupid? So keep it simple, stupid. But uh, we didn't leave out the stupid. But keep it simple. Keep it simple. Listen, I've searched the Bible from Genesis to Revelations and checked every one of the miracles I could find. I couldn't find a complicated one. They were all simple, involving simple processes with simple things and mostly simple people. So stop trying to be so super spiritual and smart and intelligent. Give it up and just humble yourself in the presence of God and he'll exalt you in due time. Do you know God resists the proud? Some people get so super spiritual that they think that their spirituality is almost a little higher than God's. It's simple. What God said, okay, let's do that. Amen? Amen. So, you know, he put, he put the figs on and whatever, and uh, God might just tell you, stop eating sugar. John's down there taking a night cheesecake, too. Yep. <laughs> like, when the water was bitter, Moses said, get some salt and throw in there. No the world salt got to do with it. <laughs> when we came to Corner Brook years ago, probably a couple or so years after we'd been here, we, we were at Terry Murren's house, and we were having a prayer meeting. There was probably about 25 people or so in the house, and the whole city was under a shutdown from the water, a beaver fever. It was a serious thing, and it, it was a recurring thing that we'd seen, you know, that had been coming. In the middle of the prayer meeting, I had, I had a word from the Lord. And, and the Lord said to me, throw some salt in the water. And I'm thinking, Lord, how, how do I do that? Where's the water? He said, go to the sink. It's all connected. So I just told everybody, you remember that, John? I told everybody there, I said, this is what we have to do. Got some salt, turned the tap on, let the water in it, and threw the salt into the water. Within a day, the boil order was lifted. And I don't know of any time since that that there's been any boil order order for beaver fever. Uh, like if it was, I, I haven't seen it. Have you, Joe? Now there have been, there've been some problems with water, where, but it hasn't been connected to that. The, thing, the plague was stayed. I didn't get a word for COVID because <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyway, <laughs> I was kind of kidding, okay? You're okay with that. Look, the thing about it is what you hear has to be from God. And if it's God, do it, and God will take care of the rest. Amen? I mean, there was another time they, they were making porridge, and Moses said, take a bit of meal and throw it in there. The thing is fixed. Because they picked some stuff to put in and make it that was, they were spoiled. You know, they were bad. They were poison. Done. I mean, Gideon. He was outnumbered, like, what, what did you say well back, John? 300 to 1 or something? What? 450 to 1. 
300 is bad enough. God said, take some trumpets and some pitchers. And he had, he had 32,000 men. He said, that's too many. Got rid of 22,000. There's still too many. He had 10,000 left. God said, come on, take them into the water. Took them into the water. And 9,700 left because they weren't careful. He said, take the 300 you got left and go. Give them trumpets and pitchers. <laughs> This don't make sense. I told you, you cannot find a sensible miracle in the Bible. It's not there. I'm telling you. I search for it. Save your time. Waste your time to look. It's not there. It's all stuff that most people would call stupid. Stupid. Foolish. Dumb. But anyway, he goes and they break the pitchers and, and, and the lamps, blow the trumpets, and next thing you know, the victory is won. Not by might. Not by power, not by 32,000 men or 10,000 men, but by the Spirit of God against all odds, the mountain came down. Amen? I'm telling you, I, I don't care who you are, where you came from, what you're doing here today, if you will learn to trust God, God is a spirit. And he releases his spirit throughout the earth and he's go the spirit of God is working overtime in the earth going around and he's looking for not sophisticated people not good looking people God don't look on the outside he looks on the heart he's looking for somebody whose heart is right towards him the Lord's he's going to and fro throughout the earth to see if he can find somebody who's trusting the moving of his spirit and we're all looking for big crowds Yes, let's get everybody saved. But God just needs you to produce a miracle. Amen? Amen. By His Spirit, it'll change everything. We, we need to honor and reverence the presence of God, the moving of the Spirit of God. Let's just, don't just take it like, oh yeah, it's just the moving of the Spirit. No, we need, to, we need to take that with awe and reverence and respect. Not just when you're in church. Some, sometimes, some people are so reverential in church. If they see you drinking a coffee in church, they think you're the devil. But then they get out of church and go home and act like the devil. Something wrong with that picture. That's good preaching, John, whether you like it or not. <laughs> we, we need to honor the Spirit of, the God, of God and the moving of the Spirit, whether it's in a building like this where, where we're coming together because God wants us to come together. It's his, uh, church is His idea to bring the people together. That's all this is for. Come together. And he, there's something about the collective worship and collective praying and collective you know, preaching. All this stuff. God wants to, 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 to stir us and boost us and encourage us. But he wants us to take whatever you gain here and he wants you to take what you got on the inside of you and, and put it in your house. When your feet hit the floor in the morning, your wife should be able to pick righteousness, peace, joy, and, and, and patience and all that stuff, the fruit of the Spirit, off of you. Your husband needs to be able to pick that wife off of you. That, there needs, that, that stuff needs to be available every day of your life. The presence of God, the Spirit of God, what God is doing in His church needs to be available 24-7. Amen. Amen? Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. When was the last time you trusted the moving of the Spirit in your situation? in what you're believing for and waiting for? Or are you waiting for this explosion? And all of a sudden, ha, it's here. No, just keep trusting God. God is working behind the scenes. 
He's working in your house. He's working in your life. He's working in your body. He's working in your family. He's working in your finances. You need to believe. If you can believe that, he's doing that. But a lot of times we just kind of, kind of get so caught up on what the rest of the world. Remember Jesus said, he said, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. A lot of times all we hear is seek the kingdom of God first. He didn't stop there. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his way of doing things. And walk that out. And what the Gentiles are spending their time working at the get. What the Gentiles are, 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 are spending their whole life around and worrying about all the time. It'll just come to you. Amen. 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 All right. I want to get... My time is, I have no idea. Sometimes I get carried away and don't realize how long I've been. Somebody said I preach long. It's only like 20 minutes or so. <laughs> you know, I was going to mention a couple of, like David used five stones. There's a huge army behind him. Right? I'm not going to preach David. You go read First Samuel chapter 17, is it? Remember Joseph? Three armies coming against him. Spirit of God can destroy an army with one angel. But there was some effort required there. He said, get your singers out. Get your singers out. And send them out front. And you know what happened? The victory came. Amen. Send Judah first. We used to sing that years ago. Send Judah first. And the victory will be. Right. And then Moses, of course, and I'm going to finish with that and go on and finish what I want to say to you this morning. But Moses, like, God said, what do you got in your hand, Moses? He said, just a rod. And we're still talking about Moses' rod today. When you yield to God and obey God and listen to what God is saying, your s simple little situations and things are transformed into supernatural tools. And the Spirit of God can do in a split second what you can't do in a lifetime. That's why we need to trust the Lord and smile in the middle of the storm. Raise a hallelujah. Amen. In the middle of the storm. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. I'm going to sing my way out of the valley. Amen. Because you're trusting God. And you can't, you, you can't do that if you're not trusting God. You'll fall down on the job. Trust me. We're in John 3.16. Classic scripture that everybody can quote but nobody really knows what it means <laughs> but we do have enough truth from it to bring us into the kingdom but in John 3 16 Jesus himself was speaking and he said you know that the son of man came to die and go to the cross to save you amen and if you believe on him you will be saved but the effort is right there not, it's not just the, cli the cliche type for God so loved the world. But it, it, is, it is the fact that Jesus went to the cross. He paid the price. But there has to be faith released when you believe on the Son of God. Your salvation was purchased, but it hinges on your reception of what Jesus did. You can't get away with that. We, we, we've got to honor and reverence and respect the power of God. And the power of God is released by His Spirit through the Word of God. God will never change what He said here. He's not going to change it for a denomination. He's not going to change it for a preacher. He's not going to change it for you or me. What He said, the Word. Jesus said in John 10, 35, He said, and the Scriptures cannot be broken. So, I mean, 
A lot of times people want to twist it around and change it. No, 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 take it. And what you don't understand, leave it and ask God about it when you get face to face with him. Amen? In Hebrews 12 and 28, let's just go there uh, a bit before we finish. Um, the writer of Hebrews said this. He said, wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For God is a consuming fire. You see, the Spirit of God operates in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is forever. And when we actually accept the principles of God's kingdom and begin to walk by the principles of the kingdom and live by the principles of the kingdom. Remember, we just talked about Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. I mean, that's the truth. That's Jesus speaking. But we actually have received a kingdom that cannot be moved, cannot be shaken. We sing about that. The kingdom of God is not going to change just like his word won't, for me or anyone else. The kingdom of God is actually where we operate from. We're in the kingdom. The kingdom is inside of us. He, Jesus said the kingdom of God, and I'm not going to get into this because this is a series of messages in, together if we want to get into it. But the kingdom of God is in you, and you are in the kingdom of God. That's a big thing. But... What makes the kingdom of God powerful is the moving of the Holy Spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by mega churches. It's not by small churches. It's not by TV evangelists. It's not by any individual. It's his spirit moving in and through people who take his word and implement it and that is how the church operates. The anointing is released when the word is released from somebody's mouth. You have to get in agreement with God and speak the word of God, whether, you, whether you're in a church of 35,000 people or 35 people, it don't matter. The same principle is applied. The Spirit of God wants to work and move in your life and help you out of any situation that you find yourself in. But God will not work outside. The Apostle John said he won't work outside of his word. He said the Spirit and the water and the word are one. And, and, and God's Holy Spirit will operate in your life and in your situation when you intentionally, purposefully make a decision to get the word inside and then let it come out. Amen? Amen. The renewing of your mind helps you commit to speaking the word of faith. We've gone through a couple of years with, I want to say it, not diplomatically, but anyway. We've gone through a couple of years when we've been propagating fear from the TV. Everything you hear from the newscast is telling you, you better be careful. This many people died today. Fear won't work with the Word of God. We need some propagation of faith so that the Spirit of God can be released through the Word of God. And we need, listen, if all you listen to over the last two years has been, has been, NTV, CBC, CNN, ABC, DEFG, HIJ, get alphabet in there, I don't care what it is. <laughs> all of these news, if all you're listening to, you're going to be still dealing with fear every day, every store you go into, every, every 
group of uh, people you're among, you're going to be dealing with fear. You, I'm not saying you can't listen to the news. I watch the news. But I got a lot more than the news coming into me. I've got the Word coming into me. I hear the Word. I like people preaching the Word and teaching the Word and teaching faith so that my heart is receiving truth and, and faith is stirring up on the inside of me. And even though I know there may be some element of fear, there may be some element of, uh, of problem and trouble, I'm not worried about it. You mean, you mean, you mean, you mean, <laughs> I might die? say this before when my white cells were down to zero and the doctor said if you get a cold or flu or anything you probably die thank you thank you very much brother <laughs> I am I mean in the middle of the night the devil came to me and said you're going to die now you need to respond to that and I responded and I said is that all you got you mean I'm going to die and be in the presence of Jesus and see all those that are gone on before? Do you mean that, that, that all of what we've been talking about, I'm going to see that I'm going to die now and I'm supposed to be afraid of that? Then the devil leaveth me. For a season. For a season. You see, Jesus responded to the devil. And he used the word. And the Bible says that the devil left him for a season. He was coming back again. He'll come back again. But you need to learn how to kick him in the butt and you do it with the word of God. If you think you're going to defeat the devil some other way than quoting the word, you think you're better than Jesus. Jesus didn't say, I'm the son of God. You get out of here, devil. He did not do that. He said, it is written. Listen to me. You need to know what is written written and to know what is written you need to read what is written you need to listen to what is written because what's written defeats the devil what's written gets you healed what's written gets food on your table what's written helps you fix problems in your marriage what's written helps you turn situations and conflicts around what's written will always get you through and keep you on top when everybody else thinks you're going under you're still there and when the dust settles the devil is defeated, and you're still here with your armor on. Amen? Sword in hand, shield in hand. Amen? Somebody needs to shout amen. amen. Or did you already do it and I was too busy to notice it? <laughs> the Lord is good. Amen? So not by might, not by power, not by my <laughs> idiosyncrasies, you know, just... What I think, what I've got an idea about, no, no, no. What I'm stuck on, no, 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 no. By His Spirit. And I want to remind you one more time. If you're committed to the Word, and you've spoken and trusted God, and even though the devil pushes fear on you, you're still saying, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. He's working for you. He's working for you. Listen, and even sometimes when you lose heart, and you get so weak you can't believe anymore. You don't know what to do. You feel like you're being overcome. God, you know what God does? He goes and finds somebody like Brother Raymond or, 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 or Brother Jonathan. Or, or he finds another brother or sister and gets them to pray and intercede for you until you can rise up and be strong again. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's how God works. That's how the Spirit of God works. That's why sometimes you'll have an impression in you to pray and to pray. Get out of bed or go into a room or go somewhere and shut the door like Jesus said. And you, you've got the impression to pray and intercede. You don't know who you're praying for, but you've got this urgency to pray because God works that way. You're praying for somebody else that probably got overwhelmed and overcome and don't know how to go another step. And I mean, I know the enemy will come sometimes and he'll bring a spirit of depression and discouragement on you and you're going to feel like, I said you're going to feel like, you're going to feel like, like the whole world is caving in around you. You're going to feel like nobody loves you and absolutely nobody cares. But if you can tie a knot and hold on, God will get you through that. 
God will get you to and out on the other side because he loves you and he will make a way for you to win and for you to get on top because he wants you on top and not underneath. He wants you above and not beneath. He wants you the head and not the tail. He wants you blessed coming in and blessed going out. There's an enemy, your adversary, the devil, who's looking to take that all away from you. And sometimes when you see it slipping through your fingers like grains of sand, you don't know what to do. God will arrange for somebody to be interceding for you so you can get back on your feet and you can begin to speak what you know is the truth and be set free and totally and completely brought back to life spiritually. Amen? Aren't you glad God loves you? I mean, I'm telling you, you can't have a tax. I could, I could list a bunch of people here who've gone through months when the enemy has used physical situations, financial situations, mental oppression, to keep people down. But the scripture we're referring to here right now, and I, want to, I just want to finish with this today. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom in you and you in it, which cannot be moved and cannot be shaken. He said, let us have grace. And remember, Jesus rose from the dead, so you could not just have grace, but you could stand smack dab in the middle of that grace. You're standing in it. All right, so you could have grace whereby you might serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. This kingdom, this kingdom, the kingdom that cannot be shaken, cannot be moved, is yours. And if you're a born-again believer, the kingdom is on the inside of you. Jesus said the kingdom is within you, and you're in the kingdom. You see, material things can be shaken. Everything you see, I don't care how tall the skyscraper is, it's going to be dust. The Bible says emphatically that the world and all the works in it are going to be burned up. I hate to have to be the one to give you that information and to let you know that, but the world and everything in it will be burned. Even the very elements will melt, the scriptures say, with fervent heat. Material things can be shaken and can be removed and can be destroyed. My flesh can be shaken. Your flesh can be shaken. My ideas can be shaken. World systems can be shaken. Government leaders can be shaken. The earth can be shaken. Philosophies can be shaken. Medical science can be shaken. But the kingdom of God can't be moved, cannot be shaken. I'm telling you this morning, lock yourself in. I mean, if you want an investment that is secure forever, invest in the kingdom of God. Get yourself locked into the kingdom of Almighty God and the word of Almighty God. When everything else goes down the tubes and you, nobody knows what to do, you're still standing, rejoicing, and trusting the God that cannot fail. Amen? Amen? Amen. Are you trusting Him today? Amen. God's kingdom will not, cannot be moved, cannot be shaken. Heaven and earth, Jesus said, will pass away. But my words will not pass away. Jesus said in John 10, 29, your faith in God, as long as you keep that faith in God, cannot be shaken. You have to let it go. It'll take you to the grave and then resurrection and into eternity if you will hold on to him. Jesus said in John 10, 29, my father, which gave them to me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Demons can't pluck you out of God's hand. Devils can't get you out of the Father's hand. Backslidden preachers and Christians can't get you out of the Father's hand. 
Nobody can get you out of the Father's hand. But you have the power to push back Daddy God's fingers and walk away. You do. But why would we do that? Nobody can pluck you out. And I'm not walking away. Is there anybody else in the house? You're not walking away? I'm not stepping out of his hand. <laughs> we, you, this was probably about 12 years ago. Joan said she had this dream, and she woke up. Maybe it was 15 years ago or more. And uh, I, I thought, I've never forgotten it. Actually, I wrote it down. I sang it in church. And this is what she was singing in the dream. It's in the hands of the father of this great big family. It's in the hands of the father. That's why I'm walking free from every worry and care that would encumber me. It's in the hands of the father of this great big family. I'm staying in the family. I'm staying in the family. Somebody say, I'm staying in the family. He's working for me. Even now while you're sitting here this morning and the devil's been trying to tell you what you're going to do when you get out of church, what are you going to do tomorrow? How's it going to work for you? You don't know what to do. You're not going to be able to make it. God is working for you. Smile and say, thank you, God. I don't know how this is going to work, but everything is under control. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. And when the Spirit of God is working for you and in you and through you, you're safe and you're secure. I'm closing with this thought, I think. Oh, it's only 12, 11, sure. We've got lots of time. Listen, the moving of God's spirit is spiritually discerned. If you could write that down and refer to it a few times in, in, in the next period of time, it will help you not be defeated with whatever is going on in your life. The moving of God's spirit. Remember, God said to Zerubbabel, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. In other words, you don't see any way this temple is going to be rebuilt. The mountain before you, the problems before you, the struggles before you are so big, there's no way. What God is saying, listen, you just leave it in my hands. I know how to fix this. I know how to fix this. Leave it in God's hands. Put it in God's hands if you haven't already done so. Because God knows how to fix what is wrong in your life. Don't be impatient. People who are spiritually motivated by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God are not going to be impatient. You will have patience. You have patience. You have need of patience after you have done the will of God that you might receive the promise. You have need of patience. You don't want to be like the guy that said, God, get me patience, but I want it right now. Just trust the Lord. Most of the troubles we have come from wanting to be a certain way, wanting to have a certain thing, wanting things to work a certain way. If you can get to the place, I mean, I, I've told the devil sometimes, I really don't care if I'm stuck with just the clothes on my body and in an apartment that the government's got to pay for because everything's been stolen from under my feet. I'm not going to worry about it because God is bigger than my trouble. And he can take you from that and still restore you. We've got to understand. Yes, do the best you can to build whatever it is around you. Do the best you can to do whatever you, you, you do. And do it the best you can do it. But don't go fearing and worrying because God can't work with that. God cannot work with that. And most of our trouble and our fears come from, oh, I'm going to lose everything i got. You know, the guy that came to Jesus and said, how am I going to get into the kingdom of God? He said, sell what you got and give to the poor. 
You notice he didn't tell everybody else to do that? When, when he went to Zacchaeus' house, he didn't say, Zacchaeus, sell everything you got. Give to the poor. Zacchaeus said, I'm going to give half what I got. He said, if I've done anybody wrong, I'll restore it to him. Jesus said, that's cool. That's good. Why didn't he tell Zacchaeus? Because he's touching the areas that are destroying your spiritual life. And if you're hung up on money, he'll touch that. If you're hung up on sex, he'll work on that. If you're hung up on, you know, relationships and, 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 and friendships and whatever, and you are one of those ugly people that nobody can get along with, he'll work on that. The list goes on. He will touch you. He'll stir you. He'll move you right where the problem is. Amen? So God wants us to just step aside from all that and the thing is this, and can I just say this as I close? When you don't let stuff be the problem, God blesses your stuff. You should write that down. That's good. If stuff is not your problem, God will bless your stuff. If stuff is your problem, it's not that God gets angry and takes it from you. Listen closely to what I'm saying because this is good. If, if, if stuff is your problem, God's not going to take your stuff. But the enemy will have access to it because you're not inviting the grace and the blessing and the protection of God on yourself in that area. If you don't, didn't get that, listen to the CD or go online because that's worth, that's worth coming for this one, I'm telling you. God wants you blessed and he wants you delivered, healed, strengthened, encouraged, and he wants you to be that to everybody around you that you meet. That's God's plan. Amen. Do you know what he said to Abraham? Uh, I'm going to close time now. This is my time up, John. God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. He didn't stop there. And make you a blessing. In Galatians 3.29, I think it says that if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed according to the promise. Listen, he's going to bless you and he's going to bless me and make us a blessing. Amen. We probably need to start singing again. Father Abraham and many children, many children. Remember that one? You sing in Sunday school. Had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. We're singing a bit lower, but you know, we can do it. Amen. Are you glad that God is doing that for you? Listen, the thing about it is the Spirit of God is working for you tonight, today, and tonight, tomorrow, throughout the week, throughout the days, the months to come. Believe that. Believe God is working for you. And he's blessing you and making you a blessing. What you desire in your heart when you've lined up your word, your mouth with the word, is starting to happen. Some days you're going to feel like the worst specimen of Christianity that ever stepped in shoe leather. Listen to me. I've been around longer than most of you here. You're going to feel that way. But I'm challenging you today. Don't own it. Don't own it, because that's not you. That's a feeling somehow the devil got on you, but you got to shake it off and get back to what you really are. And you're a child of God, you're a son or daughter of Abraham, and you are walking in victory, and you are blessed coming in and blessed going out, and God is blessing you and making you a blessing. Bow your heads with me. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that... These few words that we've been able to say this morning will not just be words that have been spoken, but they'll be revelations to our hearts and that will be stirred up from day to day again and again and again, seeing and hearing and knowing these things until, until the enemy is frustrated with his attempts to stop us. Father, we, we believe for the glory of God to be released among us. And all of us that are here this morning, others, Lord, who couldn't be with us today. And the body of Christ around this city and this province, across this nation and around the world. 
Let the glory of your kingdom manifest. Let the power of your Holy Spirit continue to work to help your people. Let your goodness, let your goodness manifest and continue to show up in our lives. We're so thankful. We love you. Thank you that you're working even right now on situations that we don't know how to fix. We lay them at your feet. We speak what you said about them. And we thank you. Things are changing. Things are changing. Forgive us for the times when we've not taken it to you. Forgive us for the times when we've gotten distracted. Help us, Lord, to be committed to your word and to the moving of your spirit so that we trust in the fact that you are doing work right now in us, through us, and around us, and for us. Thank you for your help. We believe that. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, we trust you. Find ways to remind yourself every day, saints. I'm going to have the worship team just to come to close us out here this morning as the Lord leads. But find ways to encourage yourself every day. Sometimes you may not have time to just sit down and and read your Bible and study and go through but you need to do that on a regular basis. But find something, you know. Take those psychedelic pictures off your wall and put up some scripture verses. <laughs> I've seen some pictures in a doctor's office the other day. I'm sitting waiting to see the doctor, and I'm looking at this picture. Sophie could have done so much better It was a huge picture about like maybe two and a half by three feet. And all it was, black going right up here and white across here. I, I'm not too good at... Anyway, I could do just as good. Somebody bought that and put it on their wall. All you need to do was take this piece of drywall out of here like that put it in a frame, stick it on the wall, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even exaggerating, am I, Joan? Tell the truth. It's true. I mean, put something on your wall that's going to help you all the way down the road. Something's going to talk to you when the devil is screaming at you. Something's going to remind you of your faith in God. Something's going to remind you that everything is under control. I get up to pray some mornings and I'm sitting in this chair and Uncle Bob has been, Uncle Bob, the kids call you Uncle Bob so much that all you hear now, Uncle Bob. He's not my uncle. <laughs> that wouldn't work. But Bob has been sitting in that chair a lot since he's been here and you're looking straight across and when you're looking straight across, this is what you're seeing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I could go back to bed right away and I'd be fine. Seriously. Because I've been reminded of my faith in an unshakable kingdom, in a God that cannot fail. I've been reminded that everything is under control because I'm trusting him with all my heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can buy those at the connection, by the way. Now, I'll show you the difference. If you've got no money, I'll give you one. I'll pay for it myself if you want it on your wall. I'm telling you, we need, <laughs> we need to be stirred up every day so that we're not just, can I, can I just do one more advertisement? Not about connection either. In our Bible study, if you haven't been getting out to Bible study, if it's, if it's any way you can arrange it, it would be nice to get out. We've been having some great times in the Word. This past week, we talked about a scripture, and actually that scripture came up in two weeks. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, 
if a brother be overtaken in a fault, you that are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, lest you yourself be tempted. Right? You all know that scripture? And one thing the Lord laid on my heart when I read that and when we were discussing that in Bible study was this. If you're going to call yourself spiritual, act like it. Amen? Act like it. Talk like it. Live like it. And do something that makes you at least seem like once in a while you're spiritual. Don't just, don't just like, anyway, we'll stop there. But if you're going to be spiritual, let it be manifested in the way you live, the way you talk, the way you respond to other people, starting with your husband, your wife, your brother, sister, son, daughter, mom, dad, and your work, people that you work with, your co-workers. Amen? The people you meet in the grocery store. Take this stuff with you. And coming to Bible study helps because it puts us all down to grassroots and gets us thinking about it and talking about it and learning some things. Amen?